My last videos introduced you to the Hadrian's Wall Roman forts of Vendelanda and Halsteads. So what next? Now that these reconstructions are built, what good are they? What can they do? Well, the first is obvious. Game them. Wander around. Chop down a tree. Or, if you're in the mood, destroy them. What would it look like to bring a fort down? How bad can bad get? But a reconstruction can be a lot more than just fun. It can be a tool, something that lets you take the last faint stones you see in the ground and flesh them back out into a living world again. And while you're rebuilding it, a funny thing happens. You start to see this fort, this town, from new angles. Ruins in the ground are evocative in their own way. But they can't reveal that sense of space you get with a rebuilt world. It's only once you restore walls and roofs, market stalls and benches and bollards, that you realize how narrow a street is, or how a person could live right next to a major fort, and yet maybe barely catch a glimpse of it in their day-to-day -day life. Rebuilding archaeology lets you see how light and shadow play on the town as morning turns to noon and to night. By putting flesh back onto cold stones, you can see the different pieces that go into a living town. What it might mean when a report says, this is an industrial zone, or this is a temple zone. But that's where it can get dicey, too. Archaeology can tell us a lot, especially if we're willing to get down into the weeds and pry out tiny pieces of information. But archaeology can never hope to repaint an exact picture. When all that's left is this, there's just too much we don't know. That's another reason I love building these forts. Because once the main one's built, you can play with it. You can change things and see the effect it has. The temple, out in the far west of Vendelanda, was built in the second century. By the time of my build, the early third century, it's possible that it had fallen into ruin. Not certain, but possible. Here's a view of the site if you walked in while it was up, and what it would look like if it was a crumbled mass. Very different, huh? It's not just the fringes you can play with, either. We know way less than we pretend to know about how a fort itself actually looked. Was there a wall walk with nice crenellations? No clue. Probably. But what would the fort look like without them? Hmm. Still works, if maybe a bit less impressive. What about the gate towers? Reconstructions and artist renditions up and down Hadrian's Wall have all kinds of setups. This complete actual live rebuild at South Shields shows pitched roofs with gable ends. This work at Chester's shows something like what I've built, a flat roof with the crenellations. This one here from Housesteads shows a hip roof. What might Vendelanda's towers have looked like if they had, say, a pitched roof? Or a hip roof? Hmm, cool, but I think I probably got it right the first time. If you notice, troughs show up at the base of many gate towers on Hadrian's Wall. These would probably have collected rainwater from the roofs. A pitched roof or hip roof would lose most of that water, but a flat roof with a drain hole and a gutter in the back would catch and funnel almost all of it. And what about accommodations? At the end of a typical Roman barrack block sat the centurion's quarters, identifiable because their footprint's a bit bigger, like these two at the northern end of their barrack blocks here at Vendelanda. The centurion was in command of a century, or about 65 to 80 soldiers, an important officer in the army. He had staff working for him and was allowed to have his family live with him, so it makes sense his house was bigger. But how much bigger? Again, reconstructions differ. Many show the quarters just barely larger than a normal barrack apartment. I think that's wrong. I think a centurion's apartment would have had ground floor office space and maybe sleeping quarters for his junior officers, and probably a full upper floor for his private residence. But I can show both. What do you think? That's just the tip of the iceberg. Almost any reconstruction could be envisioned a different way, at least a bit. I have a real problem with archaeologists extrapolating whole stories from very tiny fragments of evidence. It's too easy to manipulate that evidence. 
I'm probably guilty of it with the choices that I've made in my rebuilds, but at least I'm trying to be conscious of it. And as new information comes to light, I can adjust any build on the fly. Right now at Vendelanda, archaeologists are digging in this large yard area. If new 3rd century buildings turn up, I can add them within seconds. Tools like this software, Medieval Engineers, let us put flesh back onto archaeology's bones. They let us experience a site like we've never been able to before. They can be fun, or a teaching tool, or in the wrong hands, a tool for misleading and masquerading. But I believe they're the wave of the future, and it sure is a lot of fun being part of it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please check out my others. If you like what you see, I'd appreciate if you'd hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons. Thanks for watching!